Here's a quick explanation for you about how we use the superposition theorem when we're analysing AC circuits. I've taken some of the slides from the presentation that's available from the Moodle page where we're looking at AC circuit analysis. So for this example we've got a circuit diagram given to us and this highlighted capacitor is the part of the circuit where we're trying to find out the current. and We're choosing a reference current direction from left to right just to make sure that the whole way through we're going to be consistent with our reference direction through there. So to start with we're going to focus on only one of these voltage sources and we're choosing the left hand source VS1 and the right hand source gets replaced with a short circuit because the impedance of an ideal voltage source has to be zero ohms so if we're taking that voltage source out of the circuit it has to be zero ohms so that any amount of current can flow through there. The next step is to work out the circuit based on just having one voltage source in here using our rules for series and parallel circuits and being careful with the complex numbers. This is where it can make a bit of difference for you if you've got one of the fancy calculators. You'll be able to type in an expression like this one and your calculator will work out the answer directly from there. But if you have one of the more basic calculators like the FX82, you'll have to follow through each of the steps as it's shown on the page here, doing your conversions between rectangular form and polar form. One of the conversions that they've done is using this minus J with the capacitor and that's been converted in here to be minus 90 degrees. That's something you'll get used to as you practice more minus j refers to minus 90 degree angle and plus j refers to plus 90 degree angle. So either using your calculator that will do the complex numbers for you or working carefully through the steps of the calculation we'll get to our answer for the total impedance that the left hand source sees when it's trying to push current into the circuit. The next step is to figure out exactly how much current that will be and that's just from the AC version of Ohm's law with voltage divided by impedance and we've got an answer here. If you've got a complex number calculator it'll do this calculation directly as you type in those numbers otherwise if you're doing it manually you do it in two different stages 5 divided by 13.5 gives you the, the magnitude 0 0.37 and then separately do the angles 0 minus negative 63.2. So minus a negative number means we end up with a positive angle for the current. Now that's the current that is flowing out of our source into the circuit but we want to find the current that's flowing through C2 on the right hand side. So we've got this junction point where we need to divide up how much current is flowing each way. We have a rule for dividing current where we're looking at the impedances of those two branches. So you can practice this one and it should be available on your formula sheet. If we want the current in the right hand branch then the top of our equation is the impedance value for the left hand branch. And the bottom part we add together the impedance of the two branches. So in this case we're using minus J XC. It's just the same as saying R plus negative J. So going through the steps of this calculation, it's given us the answer for how much current is flowing and for the angle of that current that will be flowing through capacitor C2. Just from that one source, that's not actually the real current, that's the contribution from this one voltage source. We need to repeat this process now for the second voltage source. So you can see again, we've got a voltage source being changed to a short circuit because it has zero impedance so any amount of current can flow through there without any restriction. We're still trying to find the current flowing through C2 so we need to know from the point of view of this voltage source on the right how much impedance does it see in the circuit and it's just the same method as before. We have one series element being the, the first capacitor C2 and then we have the parallel branches the resistor and the capacitor C1. So either doing it nice and quickly in your calculator or doing a few more steps you'll end up with an answer for the impedance in there. So that's given in ohms.
oh, kilo ohms, sorry. Then again, we're working out the current that the source is pushing into the circuit using voltage divided by that total impedance. And it gives us an answer with a magnitude and angle. And it did note in the slide just before how these, these current values are milliamps and the impedance values are all kilo ohms. So those two balance each other out. So we've got this current that's flowing out of our source into the circuit from right to left. But when it comes to combining these two contributions, we need to be very careful because we've got contributions from two voltage sources flowing in opposite directions. So that's why when they've done the combination here of these two current values, they've used the first answer, the contribution from VS1, and then subtracted the contribution from VS2. Sorry, it's getting a little bit messy. So you can do that carefully like this shown here, using your calculator with the conversion into rectangular format. Or if you have a complex capable calculator, you can just enter the numbers directly in polar form and subtract one from the other. And we want to make sure that we end up with an answer in this direction. And it always helps to show, show an arrow on your circuit diagram for what your reference direction actually is. And in this case, we end up with a value of 0.25 milliamps with a negative angle. And there's a quick explanation there, referring to the third quadrant. So if you remember your maths, we've got our zero point on the right. So negative 90 is down here, 180 degrees on the left side. So negative 120 degrees would be somewhere on this sort of angle. That's what's known as the third quadrant. So it's quite correct to, to show this as current flowing from right from left to right with a negative angle, or you can change the whole thing around and show the current flowing from right to left. So I change my color. And if we do that, the angle that we'll be using will be this one here. We had 120 degrees being the angle around the right hand side and now we've got a small angle on the left hand side which will be the difference between 180 minus 124 so something like 55 degrees if that was the current as shown by the red arrow flying in the opposite direction but the magnitude is exactly the same. So there's a quick example for you about how we can use the superposition theorem with an AC circuit and being very careful with our complex numbers. So either you're going to need to learn how to drive your calculator pretty well or get really good with doing your conversions between rectangular and polar forms. So remember polar form is the one to use for multiplying and dividing and rectangular form is the one to use for adding and subtracting. So I hope that helps you with your study.